eugenicists suffer and leave you forever. In the content featured in my videos, a recurring theme highlights the futility of seeking vengeance against a narcissist. I've consistently stressed the importance of picking up the pieces and moving forward in life, rather than harboring a desire for retaliation. I've pointed out that seeking revenge is ineffective, as one can't inflict the same level of harm on the narcissist. It's a battle that's nearly impossible to win. However, these statements shouldn't be misconstrued to imply that narcissists are impervious to pain. On the contrary, there are specific actions that can profoundly hurt a narcissist, even if they don't outwardly show it. These actions can inflict deep wounds, leaving a lasting impact. In this discussion, I will outline some of these actions that can leave a narcissist hurting for a significant period. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're visiting us for the first time and have a keen interest in understanding more about narcissistic abuse, I encourage you to subscribe immediately. Additionally, if any questions arise as you explore this topic, feel free to pose them anonymously. Now, without further ado, let's plunge into the subject matter at hand. First and foremost, one of the most impactful methods to inflict enduring emotional distress on a narcissist is through the act of ignoring them. It's a universally recognized truth that being ignored can evoke feelings of discontent in anyone. However, the consequences of ignoring a narcissist, someone who thrives on your attention, energy, and every offering you provide, are akin to cutting off the air they breathe. This is something narcissists detest. Initially perceived as an unwaveringly committed presence, someone who would never abandon them under any circumstances, you become a primary attraction for them. This is a crucial reason they were initially drawn to you. Therefore, when you choose to ignore them, it deals a severe blow to their self-esteem. Moreover, your indifference compels them to exert extra effort to regain your attention or seek an alternative source of dependency. In most cases, they resort to a combination of all three strategies, an effort they would prefer not to invest. They would much rather have you remain passive and easily manipulable. Why does this action inflict such profound hurt on them? They may not admit it, but the pain arises from a place of astonishment and disbelief. They never foresaw a moment where you would sever contact completely or choose to ignore them indefinitely. Furthermore, it deals a blow to their inflated self-esteem. You've liberated yourself from their manipulative tactics. Even more impressively, you've emerged triumphant. You've reclaimed control and distanced yourself from their toxic influence. This withdrawal of your support causes significant distress for them. Naturally, their nature dictates that they'll move on. That's inherent to who they are. However, rest assured, the moment you sever all ties and communication with them, you carve a memory that they'll carry with them for a long, long time. Moving on to another facet, as previously mentioned, let's explore the concept known as the narc injury a substantial blow to a narcissist's self-esteem. This narcissistic injury, inducing profound emotional pain, occurs when you hold the narcissist accountable for their actions, set boundaries or standards, or subject them to criticism. Whether the criticism is professional and constructive, or leads to their embarrassment or humiliation, it wounds them deeply. Essentially, you're puncturing the fantastical bubble within which they reside. Keep in mind that there's the tangible world where we all coexist, and then there's the narcissist's highly distorted version of reality, where they reside. Therefore, when you burst this imaginary bubble, they are momentarily forced to confront their true selves. This is something they despise. It hurts them because, at their core, they carry an intense self-loathing. They staunchly refuse to acknowledge that their behavior might be inappropriate or flawed in any way. In a previous video, 
I delved into the details of how I inflicted a narc injury on the narcissist I had to contend with. Much like I elucidated my process, others have shared stories of how they deliberately or accidentally caused a similar injury. This inevitably leaves a dent in the narcissist's ego. It's an experience they won't easily forget. That's why when survivors are responsible for causing a narc injury, even if they are oblivious to their actions, the likelihood of being subjected to manipulation again diminishes, or, at the very least, it takes a considerable amount of time for the narcissist to muster another attempt. They deliberate multiple times before deciding whether to approach you again. Next, let's explore another action that inflicts a lasting sense of distress on a narcissist, rejection. If you are the one who takes the decisive step to terminate the relationship and move on, you wield significant power over the narcissist. Narcissists consistently yearn to be the ones calling the shots. They crave control. They meticulously ensure the establishment of a new support system, enabling them to orchestrate the conclusion of the relationship on their terms. If they are the ones initiating the departure, it simplifies their task of crafting a sorrowful narrative, portraying themselves as the victim, and garnering sympathy and support from others. This also facilitates a more effective smear campaign against you. They'll make declarations like, I had no choice but to leave. They were deceitful, disloyal, and much more. Once again, it's far more convenient for them to don the victim's cloak. However, when you are the one choosing to leave, you strip them of these manipulative tools. They might not have a new person readily available to depend on entirely. While they may enjoy some support, it's not someone they're particularly keen on relying on for the long haul. They can still resort to lies and play the victim card, but the impact won't be as potent. Since you were the one who initiated the departure, you took control and ended the relationship. You might have even severed their ties to their living arrangement or financial resources. Therefore, when you seize control and walk away, it deals a devastating blow to them. Additionally, it's crucial to emphasize this aspect. They never foresee you taking such a decisive step. Your decision to leave and establish distance catches them off guard. As a result, when you carry out this action, it etches a lasting impression in their memory, profoundly impacting them. To delve deeper into this, I suggest revisiting the discussion under point number two for a more comprehensive understanding. The fourth aspect revolves around the act of moving on. Through numerous interactions with survivors via emails, personal sessions, and live chats, a recurring narrative unfolds. I had completely moved on. I was genuinely starting to feel better. The past wasn't causing me distress anymore. I was making progress in my life. And then, precisely at that moment, they attempted to manipulate me again. I can personally relate to this experience. It's as if they suddenly realize, oh, it seems like they're improving. Let me send them one of those random, I miss you texts and disrupt their entire day by triggering a whirlwind of emotions. This behavior is an aspect of the disorder, one that I confess I don't fully comprehend because it doesn't align with my mindset. Despite lying, cheating, and stealing, and in some cases, receiving very little from us towards the end, they are unwilling to let go. It's perplexing, isn't it? We offer them nothing, and yet they persist. Do you see what I mean? Narcissists don't leave until they decide to. When the relationship ends, it's natural to presume they won't return. They pushed me away. They're done with me. However, as soon as we begin to recover, they reappear. It's as if they can sense an opportunity for manipulation. Their timing seems impeccable, though it varies for each individual. I, for instance, was deceived again three months later, while some people report being tricked again after just a month of feeling better. The timing always differs, 
leaving me bewildered. However, setting aside my grievances, your progress, whether in matters of love or beyond, is of no consequence. If you're advancing in your life without any romantic entanglements, and you're on a healing journey, feeling better through healthy means, such as joining support groups or undergoing therapy, and life starts to regain its wonderful essence, it's no mere coincidence that they attempt to re-enter your life and exploit your progress. I genuinely don't believe it's because they have an innate sense. It's not that they wish for your happiness or success. This becomes evident after thorough research. They harbour profound jealousy and insecurity about every aspect. Yet, your ability to move on deeply upsets them and leaves a lasting imprint. Let's take a moment to summarise. Most narcissists won't openly admit that these actions hurt them because it would damage their pride and ego. They often try to maintain a tough or emotionless facade. Therefore, it's crucial to understand that while the actions listed do indeed cause distress to narcissists, they will inevitably move on to someone else in their endless pursuit of unattainable perfection and happiness. This is the recurring cycle, it's the inherent nature of their behaviour. I want to dispel any illusions that taking these actions can transform a narcissist into a better person or make them endlessly chase after you. It won't happen. They may ruminate and reflect on these actions, causing disturbance, but they will eventually move on, ceasing to chase. This list isn't a guide on how to retaliate against a narcissist. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of leaving the relationship, focusing on your healing and centering your attention on yourself. It's not about being spiteful. It's about acknowledging that there are actions that cause them pain, things that will linger with them for an extended period. They likely won't disclose this pain openly, and their pursuit and relentless chasing won't last indefinitely. However, if you prioritize yourself and act in your own best interest, you'll likely end up naturally performing many of the actions on this list. This is why the approach is so potent. You don't need revenge. You simply need to prioritize yourself, and the rest will follow organically. It's like achieving two objectives with one simple action. The fifth element that profoundly affects a narcissist for the rest of their life is the fear of being forgotten. Narcissists rely on continuous ego reinforcement, feeding off attention and admiration like an addiction. Even as I write and express this, the mere discussion of them feels draining. When they sense being forgotten, it deals another significant blow to their inflated ego. The realization hits them that they are not as central as they believe themselves to be and the world doesn't revolve around them. This awareness might drive them to regain control, prompting attention-seeking behaviours if they sense someone is gradually distancing themselves. Don't let these individuals torment you indefinitely. They will exert significant effort, a fact I can attest to from personal experience. Sometimes, they persist whether you're aware of it or not, with some of them lingering for the long haul. Another action that deeply wounds a narcissist is when you conspicuously move on with someone else. While this could generally be classified under the broader theme of moving on, I wanted to distinguish it to emphasize a particular aspect. Life progresses without them, whether it involves a new partner or if you choose to spend some time alone. The truth is, they despise both scenarios. However, Witnessing you with someone else is evidently more agonizing as they grapple with feelings akin to what we experience when we see them with a new partner. They evaluate their own situation just as we do, experiencing jealousy and pondering questions like, Mmm, what's so special about this new person? What's happening here? In this situation, a narcissist might strive to regain control attempting to divert your attention from your new relationship and entice you back to them. As I mentioned, 
they contemplate many of the same things we do, and I believe they experience self-loathing similar to what we might feel at times, observing you move on with someone else, progressing and finding happiness in your life. This is something they don't easily let go of. I welcome you to share in the comments what you believe causes deep discomfort for a narcissist. Let me know if there's something you intentionally or unintentionally did that you think has wounded a narcissist or struck a blow to their ego, perhaps inflicting a narc injury. Feel free to spill the tea with me. And for those who occasionally wonder about the meaning of spill the tea, it's a term reminiscent of sharing some juicy information or gossip akin to sipping a cup of tea. Whether you choose to share gossip or disclose the truth, I'm more inclined towards the truth. Essentially, it signifies engaging in a discussion in the comment section, so don't hesitate to comment, even if it involves occasional swearing. I don't mind. It's amusing, and I usually don't delete such comments because they entertain me. Express your thoughts freely. If you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, as it genuinely supports me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, consider doing so and share the video if you think it could be beneficial to other survivors in spaces where my videos may not have reached. Wishing you a wonderful day, survivor, and remember to take good care of yourself. Narcissists, being vulnerable individuals, perceive the expression of emotions as a weakness and potential threat. Due to a lack of support or encouragement during childhood, they find it challenging to articulate their feelings. Their belief in the necessity of displaying strength to earn respect stems from a fear of being disliked and not gaining the respect they desire. Greetings, everyone. We appreciate your decision to watch this video. Our aim is to provide insights into narcissistic behaviours. In today's presentation, I will explore the difference between giving the silent treatment to a narcissist and receiving it from one. Unlike narcissists, our silence is not driven by a desire for attention or affection from others. I will guide you on effectively employing the silent treatment with a narcissist and provide some expectations regarding their potential reactions when you opt not to engage in conversation. Given the prevalence of narcissists in society, understanding how to navigate interactions with them can be beneficial, as not every encounter with a narcissist leads to positive outcomes. To safeguard yourself from emotional harm caused by a narcissist, it is essential to establish and maintain firm boundaries refraining from responding to their overtures or displaying signs of concern. It's crucial to differentiate our approach from that of a narcissist. For instance, a narcissist might employ such tactics to punish and control individuals in their sphere of influence. When confronted with rejection, criticism or any form of confrontation, a narcissist often resorts to silence to evade accountability redirecting their energy toward plotting their next source of supply or the downfall of their perceived adversary. When a narcissist abruptly ceases communication, their intent is typically to inflict harm. They utilize silence as a weapon to carry out destructive actions. Consequently, the narcissist's silence is cruel, malicious, and driven solely by malevolent intentions. However, Implementing the silent treatment, adopting a grey rock strategy, or any method that prevents us from engaging with them is crucial for our own safety. Placing trust in a narcissist was a significant error, a truth we now recognise. Dealing with narcissists can indeed be perilous. It is expected that the narcissist will employ tactics to push us to our breaking point, using words and actions intended to upset and provoke us. It's crucial to bear in mind that when the narcissist perceives mistreatment, they will accuse us of mental abuse and neglect if we choose not to vocalize our grievances. They will assert that we deliberately deceived them, claiming they never abandoned us. 
Essentially, narcissists fabricate falsehoods about everything. While they exploit silence to inflict harm and maintain control, the blame is swiftly shifted onto us when we employ the same strategy for self-protection. Another aspect to consider is that narcissists find it challenging to tolerate their own tactics being used against them. The mere absence of our response and the use of silence both perplex and disturb them. The realization that we are not actively trying to pacify them intensifies the inner turmoil experienced by the narcissist. Silence emerges as the most effective strategy when dealing with narcissists, as they can only exert control over us if we reveal our genuine thoughts and emotions. Choosing silence is a strategic move to thwart the desired outcomes that narcissists seek. It entails no form of domination or manipulation over them, prioritizing safety above all. Engaging in self-care is crucial, and no one, especially a narcissist, should guilt us into neglecting it. It's essential to distinguish between ignoring a narcissist and adopting narcissistic behavior, even if the narcissist accuses us of such actions. Silence from another individual doesn't always signify a deliberate attempt to cause harm. Based on the knowledge we've acquired, employing silence proves to be the most effective means of thwarting a narcissist's control. Ignoring a narcissist becomes a powerful tool to discourage their unwanted advances, and it brings a sense of accomplishment by refusing to disclose our genuine thoughts and emotions. When we allow a narcissist into our lives, they manipulate our minds and exploit us, thriving on emotional responses, understanding, and various forms of interaction. However, if they fail to elicit such reactions, they'll be compelled to seek alternative means of access. In truth, providing them with no leverage is the best approach. While they may resort to name-calling and hurtful remarks to damage our reputation and provoke a response, it's important to recognize their tactics. Narcissists find individuals attempting to avoid them unappealing, working to our advantage as it reinforces our need to distance ourselves from their influence. If ignoring them or adopting a grey rock strategy effectively halts their communication, it's a worthwhile choice. We should refuse to squander our limited mental and emotional energy on individuals solely intent on draining us, as without appropriate measures, narcissists have the capacity to inflict various forms of harm upon us. Hence, the onus is on us to step forward and put an end to their interference once and for all. My earnest plea is to motivate everyone to actively disengage from narcissistic individuals. It's crucial to remember that narcissists can only wield influence over us if we allow ourselves to form personal attachments to them. Maintaining a composed demeanor in interactions with a narcissist is paramount, and unless we grant permission, they cannot seize control. This concludes our discussion for today. I genuinely hope that you have gained valuable insights from this presentation. Feel free to share your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Rest assured, we deeply value and appreciate your viewership.